so it's September 25th, 2009 at the Gimbal Eye Center. And Dr. Gimbal's performing right eye cataract surgery today. On this. So we look through the same microscope as Dr. Gimbal and uh, we see what he sees. Mm -hmm. So Thornton ring to hold the eye still and then a small incision here called a paracentesis. That's a diamond blade and the incision is about a millimeter wide. Now, this is topical anesthetic that's applied to the surface of the cornea and then also into the chamber below the cornea called the anterior chamber. And now a, an ophthalmic viscoelastic device or a viscoelastic gel. And the gel is, uh, is placed in the eye to perform several different functions. It creates space, it enhances visibility for the doctor, it protects tissue, um, and also in this case, Dr. Gimbel uses a combination of gels with different properties. The gel he's applying or inserting now is, is especially to protect the underside of the cornea from, from cell loss, uh, because that's very important to visual clarity after the operation. So Thornton ring again, and now the main incision at the top of the eye. This one's called a scleral incision, or more specifically, a scleral tunnel. So Dr. Gimbel makes a tunnel-like incision through the white of the eye, and then we'll see the blade emerge just below the base of the cornea, right there. Now that it's a, shaped like a tunnel and with a bit of a bend in it, and it's about two and a half millimeters wide. Starting to get to the cataract now. Right now, Dr. Gimbel is making what's called a capsularexis. This is the clear membrane that surrounds the cataract on all sides, and Dr. Gimbel makes this opening about five and a half millimeters in diameter using a technique he calls CCC, or continuous curvilinear capsularexis, referring to the way he makes it in a continuous curving motion. So to separate the cataract from the, the capsule, he performs what's called hydrodissection. So a syringe filled with a saline solution is, and the fluid is injected between the membrane and the cataract, and now we'll see the fluid wave flow across the back of the cataract, separating the membrane from the cataract and then he'll sweep the cannula one way then the other to separate the front flap and as he injects the fluid the cataract will start to break up into layers. So our pupil appears red right now we're getting a bit of red reflex which is our camera light reflecting off the back of the eye. As the cataract gets removed that red, refre red reflex will get brighter and clearer. So it'll cloud up a little more as it breaks up into layers as a result of the saline. We call this part of the procedure KPE, or a Kelman's phacal emulsification. Uh, the reason for that is Dr. Charlie Kelman is the inventor of the procedure. Phacal emulsification is the process. So the tip, the, the concept is the tip vibrates ultrasonically at, at varying frequencies between 32,000 and 40,000 times a second. And the resulting emulsion is suctioned out and then fluid is introduced back into the eye to replace that volume, keep that chamber pressure constant. The little instrument on the left helps him to maneuver the cataract material, so he'll start to fracture the cataract, and here's the first fracture. Right there, so he'll wedge those two halves apart. Now we see a bit of bright red reflex in behind, so that'll get brighter and clearer. And now he'll rotate the cataract and fracture it a few more times calls this technique divide and conquer. It's a Dr. Gimbel technique for efficiently removing the cataract material. Well, the, the technique of ultrasound, or the concept of ultrasound to break up and remove the cataract was actually developed in the early 60s and was first used on a patient in 68. So the technology has been around for a while. Uh, Dr. Gimbel was the first surgeon in Canada to use this technique in 74, so he's been doing it for 35 years. Uh, lots, lots of changes in the meantime. Uh, the development of foldable, le foldable lenses and the viscoelastic gels and all kinds of other technology that's made this possible. And uh, Dr. Gimbel has been doing the surgery without sutures and anesthetic for uh, since the early 90s. So the only anesthetic the patient has is the topical anesthetic that's applied to the tissue. There's no needles or blocks normally. And 
one indication of how cloudy it is or how dense the material is, at least is the number on the top right. It refers to the, the CDE refers to cumulative delivered energy, and it's a reference to the amount of ultrasound that's been used to break up the cataract. That's a, about an average number for a cataract. Uh, someone that's allowed their cataract to be, become very dense um, and hard, that number can easily go over 100. So we're at 25, and likely that number, that CDE number will likely be maybe 30. So that's, that would be about average for the cataract surgeries that we see. But there's a lot of other factors involved because cloudiness and density don't always go together. Just the last bit of nucleus to be removed. Nice bright red reflex, which is what we're looking for. You can also see the line of the capsular axis. So again, the strategy for, the, for cataract surgery is to leave the lens capsule behind intact, with the exception of the opening instrument. It's called irrigation aspiration handpiece. So irrigation fluid in, aspiration fluid out and material, and suction is applied, and a soft tip instead of a metal tip. This cortex layer is right on, it's adhering directly to the membrane on the inside. So again, we'll get a clearer view through the pupil as the cortex is removed. So cataract surgery back even as recently as the early 70s involved a very big incision and the entire lens was removed. And that was before the development of implantable lenses that meant that the patient was what we call aphakic or without a lens. So big thick glasses and all kinds of other issues involved with that mm -hmm. sort of surgery. But that was the technology at the time. With the development of this, ultrasound, um, foldable lenses, there's now lenses implanted and uh, the lenses used to be implanted in a different position in the eye but now they're implanted in the bag, in the lens capsule which has been determined to be the best place for them. So the technology is improving all the time. The incisions continue to get smaller and smaller. Um, they're now down to, we're, we are, Dr. Gimbel is using incisions as small as two and a half millimeters for the major part of the surgery. And there's technology out there now to go even smaller, down to less than two millimeters. So working on the inside face of the flap, or the, or the front membrane of the capsule, he'll, re he'll reverse the instrument and he will do the same thing to the back membrane. You can see s still a few cells on that membrane. He wants those removed as well. About 5% of cataract patients develop what's called a secondary cataract. Um, the medical term is uh, PCO or posterior capsule opacification, meaning that the capsule actually, a, a layer of those cells starts to regenerate and thicken and cloud up the vision. So it's technically not a cataract, but it's off the scholastic gel. Uh, again, for many of the same reasons, create some space and protect the tissue. So here's the lens rolled up like a burrito to fit through that small incision. It's the yellow material in the injector. So it goes through the small, inje uh, through the small uh, incision through the opening in the capsule and into the capsule. So the lens unfurls to a diameter of about six millimeters, a little larger than the capsular axis. And it has two little extensions on it that are curled up in the center right now called haptics. And they unfurl and anchor the lens in place at the equator of the capsule out, out, out of our sight underneath the iris. And then in a couple of weeks, the lens, the lens and the capsule actually start to stick to each other to hold the lens in place. So there's the lens in the bag, the haptics are unfurled, and now Dr. Gimbel will come back with the irrigation aspiration handpiece and suction out the gel, replace it with a fluid called balanced saline solution, get the lens positioned, make sure the haptics are extended. Now he's behind the lens removing any gel that could get trapped between the lens and the posterior membrane of the capsule or the back membrane. So now the last, last few adjustments with the saline solution. He's looking to get the incisions to seal up and, and make sure the lens position is where he wants it. We'll see him use the syringe to apply a little pressure to the eye to, to check the incision integrity. Incision hydration there. And now the sponge as he checks the incision. There's the sponge. 